Today, we get to talk about solving some exponential functions, uh, exponential equations. We'll talk specifically about exponential growth and exponential decay, which some of you may have heard of. And we will also talk about how to calculate compound interest. That's when you put money in the bank and the bank pays you interest, and so that goes into your account. And then the next time they pay you interest, they pay interest on what you put in and on the interest that they added to it. Or it's also when you're paying off a loan, when you've got a mortgage on your house, how they figure out how much is still left in that loan. So a lot of really good practical applications with what we talk about today. So first, let's solve this exponential equation. It is an exponential equation because the variable I'm trying to solve is an exponent. And I'm going to set this up two ways that get us to the same point, and then we'll actually solve it with the help of our calculators. So first way would be this is exponential form. X is in the exponent. So let's convert it to logarithmic form, which means we need to change it to a log with some base of an argument equals something else. We know the base for the log and the base for the exponent have to be the same. So what's my base, which I will write on this one just for emphasis, but we know log base 10, we could skip writing the 10 because that's the common log. The log is the exponent, so the log needs to equal what was over there as the exponent. And then that leaves my 27 to go right here. So in exponential form, the 10 was close to the x plus 5. In logarithmic form, the 10 is close to the 27. It switches when we switch between forms. So we're not ready to do this yet. Put the calculators down. If we put log base 10 of 27 in the calculator, the calculator would give us a number, right? So the left-hand side of that is just a number. So I have x plus 5 equals a number. If I want just x, what am I going to have to do, Wyatt? Well, that's not really accurate because if I move it, then I've got a plus 5. I need to subtract it from both sides. It changes signs if it goes to the other side. So I can do log base 10 of 27 and then subtract 5, and that will give me my x. But I had to be careful entering that on the calculator. It is not the log base 10 of, and then I've got this box, 27 minus 5. This is not log base 10 of 22, in other words. So what I need to do when entering that on the calculator is to do log, and I can enter the 10 or skip it, put the 27 in this box, and then use my arrow button to go out of that, and then do a minus 5, and then it'll show up with parentheses around that 27. Or I can do log base 10 of 27, enter, and then it gives me a number, and then I can do minus 5, enter to get my answer. Does that make sense? And who's done that can tell me what answer you got, Nicole? Negative 3.567. Is that what everybody got? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Seeing a couple of puzzled faces there. Let's see if that's what I had. I had 0.569. Okay. Now are we happier with that? All right, now let me go back to the other way we could talk about setting this up, and it's going to get us to exactly the same place. I think it may be easier whenever you have the x is in the exponent, and you have a base to that exponent, take the log with the same base of both sides. So let me rewrite this 27 equals 10 to the x plus 5, where I have a little bit of room to write in there. Since this is a base 10, 
I am going to take the log base 10 of both sides. And any time you have log base 10 of 10, log base 5 of 5, log base 3 of 3, it cancels out. The log of all of this is the exponent. So that side is just x plus 5. And that equals the log base 10 of 27. And that's exactly what we had setting it up the other way. But it may be a little bit faster and easier for you to get used to thinking of it as take the log of both sides. Are we good with that? All right, moving on then to exponential growth and decay. Does anybody know examples of when we have exponential growth or decay besides interest that I was just talking about with money? Many of you heard of any other things? Well, you will in some of your science classes coming up. It's often the growth of bacteria. It doubles and then doubles and then doubles every so many hours. We had a lot of exponential models with um, early on in the pandemic with the COVID rates of transmission and how many people were infected, the positivity rate. Uh, it can be used in voltage problems when you're doing that in physics. Radioactive decay, when there's been some sort of radiation leak around a power plant or whatever, um, or radioactive dating, carbon dating, as well as finances. So we can have either exponential growth or decay. Exponential growth means it's shooting up really, really fast. It may not start out real steep, but then it gets even steeper than that straight line that would have gone through the first three po first few points. So it's going to be something that gets like this and then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. We're graphing these in terms of time. As time goes on, we have more and then more and then it's getting steeper and steeper as we go farther out in time. This is our amount at time t. So that means 0, 0 right here is 0 across, 0 up and down, so the time is 0. But I don't really have that. What I really have is this y-intercept right here, 0 on the time axis, and then up to this amount. So at time 0, this is the amount that I have at time 0. In other words, it is the starting amount. I start out with some amount, and then after this much time, it's doubled. And after that much more time, it's doubled again, and so on. So that kind of makes sense. The other one that I can have is exponential decay. And that's when it's getting less and less. I will still have time on the horizontal axis. The amount at some time here on the vertical axis, but this time it's going to be getting less and less. It's going to be dropping and then dropping, and then it just kind of starts to level out. Because will I ever get to where I have a negative amount of something? It gets closer and closer to zero. It never actually hits that. This is still go across the zero and up to this amount. So this is the amount at time zero the y-intercept is still the starting amount. So now let me give you guys the equation, the formula to write down that we're going to be using on these exponential growth and decay problems. And that is the amount at time t equals the initial or starting amount times e to the kt. k is a constant, very much like variation problems. Each variation problem had a different k value. Each exponential growth problem will have a different k value, but k will stay the same for that whole problem. And t will be the amount of time. Now, a couple other things I want to point out. If k is positive, that's when we're going to have exponential growth. And if k is negative, that's when we're going to have exponential decay. That's how we can tell the difference in the two. Also, 
you're going to get a K on the calculators that has a whole bunch of decimal digits. Is it okay to round that and then reuse that rounded value? Not the way we do it here at this school. Back of the book, however, rounded. So every single one of these in the back of the book, we count as wrong. You need to wait and get the correct answer when you're in here the next day, odd or even. We never use the rounded ones. We are going to always store it so we can use the whole thing. Who is still talking? We need to wait just a moment. All right, so let's move on to our first exponential growth or decay problem. And we are going to approach these pretty much exactly like we approach a variation problem. We are going to start out with one case and figure out K and then use our formula once we know K and figure out what's missing out of case two. So we'll start by writing down our formula. The amount at time T is the starting amount times E to the KT. And then we start plugging in the things that we know. So first off, we know this is increasing exponentially. So we know this is going to be a growth one. So we know we better end up with a positive K or we've done something wrong. At first, there were 400. Yesenia, where should I put the 400 in this problem? Uh-huh, it's the starting amount. So we put that at A0, the amount at time 0. And three years later, so that means the time is three, and the amount then, so that means A3 is 1,600. So I put A3 would be 1,600, 400, E to the K times three, or 3K. Now I need to solve for K, but it's an exponent. So I need to solve this exponential equation. First thing I'm going to do is to divide both sides by 400, because then I have 4 equals e to the 3k. To get rid of the e, I need to take the right kind of log of both sides. What log base what do I need to use? Emily, if I want to get rid of E, I will log base 10 of E cancel out? Log base 10 of 10 cancels. Log base 3 of 3 cancels. So what base do I need to get rid of the E? I need log base E, which is also called natural log or LN. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log base E of E goes away. The log is just the exponent. That side is now 3K is the natural log of 4. So if I want just K, what do I have to do, everybody? Divide by 3. And this is what you are going to enter on your calculators. So I would, let me see if I can get mine up here and do it along with you. So I would probably do the control divided by, so I get box over box. And then I'm going to put control LN, natural log of four in the numerator, go down to the denominator with a three. And is everybody getting 0 0.462? Okay, I want you to always write that down so I can see, oh, that they made an error there. If you get it wrong, I need to be able to figure out where you went wrong. So always write that down. However, like I was just saying, not okay to use it rounded like that. So what do we need to do? So be sure right now you do control Control, store, I think that's my K. Oh, why is it not one of you? There we go. And now we've stored it. So 
So then let's go back to our problem here. I don't need this. And let's see what else we're asked to find. We are now asked to find how many rabbits in 10 years. So we need to find the amount at time 10. That's going to be, is A0 still 400? Do we still have 400 at year zero? So 400 E, and I like to put a box around my K to remind me that this is something that I've stored. So K times 10. And I would like for you to punch that in on your calculators, 400, then the E to the X button, and in the exponents box, put 10K and enter. Ethan, looks like you've gotten something. What did you come up with? Anybody else getting that on your calculator? I always want to see that written down with, a, with those decimals in it so I can see what you actually did to see if you entered it correctly. Then we stop and think, does that answer make sense in this context? Are we going to have a fraction of a rabbit? No. So in this context, we want to round and say 40,637 whole rabbits but I want to see both of those numbers in your work. Now, if we were finding time, would it make sense to have a decimal? Can you have a fraction of a day? Can you have part of a year? Can you have part of an hour? So with something like that, we would just stop with the decimal places rather than continuing on. Questions with this one? Okay, next one. This time we are going to do exponential decay. So this one should be doing something like this, and we should get a negative k this time around. If not, something's wrong. So we start out with our formula. Amount at time t is a0 e to the kt. Where should I put my 4.25, Caleb? Uh -huh, because it's A0 means my amount at time zero when I'm starting. So we're going to put the 4.25 right there. Um, 10 years later, so we know our time is T, and then this will be our amount at time T. So we'll put 3.92 equals that 4.25 E to the K times 10. Jack, what do I need to do first as I try to simplify this thing? I need to divide by the 4.25. So that goes away. So e to the 10k is the messy 3.92 over 4.25. If I have e to something, what do I need to do to make the e go away, Griff? I need to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log of this weird fraction, and then I'm going to be taking the natural log, because this 4.25 isn't there anymore. What I've really got now is natural log of the e to the 10k. So the natural log of e goes away, and the log is just the exponent. So 10k is the natural log of 3.92 over 4.25, but I want just k, not 10k. So then I need to divide both sides by 10. And you may enter that on your calculators, control divided by, in the top box, ln of 3.92 over 4.25, and then go down in the denominator, and put a 10 down there. To me, that's probably the easiest way to enter that. Cooper, have you gotten a value for K yet? And on that one, I might throw in a few more places just because I had so many zeros, so I might put that in. Did we get negative like we expected? What do you need to do now? 
So everybody be sure you store that cake. Then let's see what else we need to do. We are going to try to find now how much after 30 years. That means we want the amount after 30 years. It is going to be the amount at time zero. Was there still 4.25 when they started this whole situation? So 4.25 e to the kt, but t needs to be 30. So you're going to do 30 times your stored k. And go ahead and type that in just like that, 4.25 e to the x button. And in the box for the exponent, you do 30k. And then we'll make sure we're all getting the same things. Ada, did you get that one? What others are getting? And our units here are ounces. Does it make sense to have fractions of an ounce? Is everybody okay there? Okay, let's move on to money. And the formula is going to look slightly different. If we have compounded continuously compounded interest, the formula is the amount at time t, is the initial amount, but initial amount in banking is called principal. What's the starting value of the loan? How much did you actually borrow? You pay back a lot more than that over time because you pay it back with interest. Or how much do you first put into the account? That's the principal before they start adding interest onto it. So that's still just the amount at time zero. And then we still have e to the kt, except in banking terms, the, the rate is what is held fixed. So refinance your home at 1.75% interest. That's the rate they're advertising, things like that. So that is your constant in there. It must be written as a decimal. So that means if we have 7%, we need to write that not as 0 0.7, but 0 0.07, because 7% means 7 out of 100, 7 one hundredths. 25% um, would be 0 0.25. 3.25% Three percent would be the 0 0.03, just like I did the seven percent first. So the three would need to go in that spot, but then we have a quarter of a percent more, so that would be 0 0.0325. So you got the decimal part there. Okay, the top, the AT is still your ending amount, and T is your time. But the trick with these is you have to make sure your time units are the same. They're going to say they're going to pay you this percent interest per month or this percent interest per year or per decade. And then you need to make sure this matches. So if they say they're going to pay you a certain percent per year, so let's suppose, so if we're going to be talking about um, years, but then, well, now let's, let's suppose they pay the interest per month. And you want to know how much you'll have after 10 years. I can't have months here and years here. So a year would be, or 10 years would be how many months? So you'd have to convert so that it was 120 months if your rate was per month. So that's just saying make sure your time units match. Have I talked long enough that everybody has all the parts of this formula copied down? And a lot of times students find this one easier to remember by thinking of the interest formula is PERT, P-E-R-T, P-E to the R-T. So let's do one interest problem and that'll be it. So since it is money, our amount at time T, we are going to use the PERT 
version of the formula. 980. Is that the starting amount or the amount after some length of time has gone by? Starting, so it's the principal, so the 980 goes right here. And were you listening? I just said a moment ago, how do I write 7%? 0 0.07, and then that needs to be times t, but all we want to know is the amount after nine years, and when they don't specifically say that it's per month or something different, then it means annually or every year, so nine years, this is the interest rate per year, so times nine of those. All you need to do is to type that in on your calculators. 980, use the e to the x button, fill in the box on, for the exponent with 0 0.07 times nine, and let me know what you get. Kit, what do you, do, what do you have? Is that what everybody's getting? Except I'm writing it kind of strangely for a reason. What are my units here? What am I talking about, everybody? Dollars. Do we talk about dollars with three decimal places? So we need to round it to two since it's money. That's the one time we don't use three decimal places. So we would just list that as and six cents like that. Make sense? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down on what we've covered today. Just a new formula with one slightly modified version if it is interest. And then it's just plugging in.